Welcome to part three of the Happy Landlords mini series. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, if you are, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And also, I'm getting comments now in the, the things below. I always reply to them if I can. Well, not if I can, that's not true. I always reply to them when I can. So they're always there. Put a comment in, I'll reply to it. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you just stumbled across this video, again, because I can see that the numbers are sort of going up, that's really good, cool to see. Um, then, yeah, who, who the hell is this guy on YouTube? Uh, I'm a landlord. Uh, I've been doing these videos for a few years now. Um, I guess my qualification for, for making them is I'm big enough now. I've been doing it long enough. Um, whatever success I've had gives me, um, yeah, I've made plenty of mistakes. It gives me the, the, uh, the experience to, to impart this. So yeah, how to be a happy landlord. Make no mistake, it sounds a bit woolly, but it's a lot of actionable points. Go back to the first and the second videos. If you're just watching this, this is the third. Um, and you'll see it builds up. There's a, there's a process. There's three lines of defense and three management focuses. Um, go through them, go through all six videos. They'll probably end up being sort of seven or eight in the end. And uh, there, there are some actionable points in there. Um, I judge my personal happiness, this is why I call it the happy, so my personal success, this is why I call it the happiness um, uh, mini-series, by how happy I am. Um, there's only a certain level of happiness. Everybody's at a certain level of happiness, whatever they wake up in the morning, nothing else distracted them, that's where you're at. It's a hassle that pulls you down from that. Just think of that, because running a property portfolio is a load of opportunities for hassle to creep in. We're just about eliminating, eliminating those. It's really quite simple. You just identify all the things that pee you off and stop doing them. So here we go. Um, in first and foremost, I'm a landlord. Um, so this is from a landlord's perspective. I run a company, I own a company called forthelandlords.com. If you're listening to these um, videos and you're hearing, he knows my pain, um, I do. <laughs> I've been in that position, I'll be in your position as well. Undoubtedly, I've made every mistake under the uh, under the sun, uh, but we can fix them. So in the description, there'll be a link for a discovery day. Book on it and uh, it's your chance to get any questions you have answered. Um, it's on a Zoom and there's a few enough people so you can ask a question if you want to, but enough people that you can hide in the background if you want. No obligation. Um, we make um, connections with landlords who come along and they become our landlords. So, uh, you know, make no mistakes, not totally altruistic. We're finding some uh, new clients this way, but it's a nice way to find clients, isn't it? It beats uh, beats advertising on the radio or whatever. So, um, so yeah, th th these guides are for you. If you want to implement them yourself, feel free. If you want us to implement them, book on a discovery call. So, there are six videos, like I say, there might be some bonus ones, but the six videos are the three lines of defense and the three management focuses. The last um, video was all about the second line of defense. We're now on to the third line of defense. Um, this one's a silent killer. Um, the third line of defense is nothing on the face of it dramatic at all. It's a little bit boring, to be honest. Couldn't even describe it as admin. Um, the first line of defense, having a decent and safe home, it's, it's fundamental. You know, it's one of those things where you being a um, an, an engaged landlord, it, you're just going to get better results out of it. You put the decent and safe home there, everything runs smoothly, you get less maintenance, you get better tenants, um, le less hassle, everything just runs nice, and that's your starting point. Um, the second line of defence, uh, making sure you put a good tenant in, which you know, one one thing follows the other, but it doesn't. You, know, you don't have to have a good tenant just because you've got a good house. You can have a good tenant because you've got a good house, but you've got to pick the right tenant. It's all about referencing. Go back to the second video. Um, that is a really, really big win. You know, 95% of your hassle, I think, comes from having the wrong kind of tenant. So getting that right um, is, is a big win. This third line of defense, like I say, it's a silent killer. Um, you won't know how important this is until it all goes wrong. If you kind of know how important it is, it'll nag away at you, and it's the thing that uh, will keep you up at night. Very few landlords are actually kept up at night by it, because they don't quite realise how uh, serious it is until it comes and bites them. Um, what it, when it goes wrong, probably, we, we sort of track it, and actually, if you look at the numbers, it's about 5% of cases when it goes wrong. So you might be lucky, you might be one of those 95% of people. Um, but if it did go wrong in those 5% of cases, if you have the third line of defence in place, and don't worry, I know I'm being a bit of a tease, but I will tell you what it is in a minute, um, it will actually enable you to fix it relatively easily, um, relatively, definitely with a process. It will slot into a process and you know, 
third line of defense should stop it happening um, but if it does happen you're um, you, you, you're going to be able to do something about it we're talking about third line of defense perfect paperwork um, not only is it a nice bit of alliteration but it's apt because nothing less than perfect is, is going to be can do you know, every single i every single t done uh, that's dotted and crossed um it's very very easy to get it wrong because there's an awful lot to do uh, and it's dull and it's boring and you probably don't want to um my favorite analogy of the moment is the pilot flying the plane um, pilots don't fly planes anymore, at least not big, big um, um, sort of uh, passenger jets. They grab onto the stick, they push it to the left, go to a computer, and the computer says, yeah, we'll do that, or no, you can't do that. Um, putting all the paperwork together for a tenancy and ongoing, it's not just perfect paperwork, the, the line of defence is, is, is that uh, before the tenant moves in, but it's, it needs maintenance ongoing as well. You need a great big computer system to look after it. I always forget the number of things. Like high, high hundreds, 156 rings a bell, uh, pieces of legislation that a landlord needs to be across. Do I know what they all are? No, do I heck. Does anybody in the office know what they are? Probably together, collectively. If you got them with a pen and paper and gave them a quiz, they'd get high 90% of them. But on the day, they'll probably forget one. If you told me, they go, oh yeah, I remember. But that's not the point, is it? You can't forget them. It's got to be perfect. How do you look after that? with a great big piece of software and a diary system. It just has to be like that these days. There's no two ways about it. If you don't, you will forget something, whether you know you've got it or not. The worst thing, of course, is forgetting it and not knowing. Uh, if you do get it wrong, there are dire, dire consequences. The worst one is imprisonment, of course. Not all those ones, you know, big headline, Landall goes to prison for whatever. Um, happens really, really rarely. So I wouldn't fret about that one, to be honest. If you, if you are doing this, I, I certainly don't, but um, fret about it. We, we, we have got perfect paperwork, everything's running right. So we don't fret about that one. But some of the very, very common ones, far more common, um, is <laughs> four or five times a month. Somebody walks through our office door and says, here's the problem I've got. So oh, yeah, yeah, we know about those ones. But <laughs> you should have had perfect paperwork. Um, we don't say that. If you want to work through our office door, we're not going to crow about it. We'll just get on with fixing it for you. Uh, far more regular, it's you know, f they all carry huge um, financial penalties, um, whether they're voids, fines, you know, bad debts, tenants living in a house, trashing it and not moving out court fees, you know, whatever. All too common, we fix that kind of thing, literally, literally I say four or five times a month. Um, now, I talk about happy landlords, and when I'm talking about happy landlords, I'm actually thinking about unhappy landlords. Yeah. You think about, like I say, happiness is there, it's the things that pull you down. And so actually you've got to think about what is it that makes me unhappy in order to be happy. You don't just start putting more good stuff in to be happy. You take away the bad stuff and that releases you to be happy. It's a different, you've got to think about it that way. It's the only way you, you're going to get to happiness. You don't start to do more stuff to make you happier. You take away the bad stuff and you just pop up to your natural level of happiness. So I think about a particular scene, and I've been in these, these situations many times, I'm sure you will have been, you're in a, at a landlord meeting, you know, um, town hall or um, hotel conference room or, or a pub or whatever you know you're listening to the landlords and generally speaking it won't be apart from the happy clappy person in the corner that's trying to sell you something um, if you listen to the landlords in the bar later on or just chatting um, they're not usually full of good cheer they've usually got moans that's okay you know we're in the kind of business where um, moans happen because we're reactive you know you don't if you've got 10 tenancies you don't get 10 tenants phoning you up in the morning just saying just checking in Thanks so much for your beautiful house. I really appreciate that you've got the first and second line of defence happen. And I really like this house. That doesn't happen. You just get one phone call a month saying there's a leaky tap. And it's easy to get into that spiral of being a bit moany about that. Don't. That's one of the things you really need to stop doing. Um, but that's not what actually I pick up on. What I'm picking up on is the moans that people can do something about. You know, um, isn't it unfair that the council are putting in uh, this licensing scheme? Isn't it unfair that there's so much paperwork? It's ridiculous, I can't be bothered to do it. Um, isn't it unfair that when I come to claim my deposit, it's stacked against me, it's in the tenant's favour? And what I know categorically is that those sort of um, moans, you know, blaming the wrong person, um, completely untrue. And it winds me up because if you do things right, yeah, it won't, it won't become that. Uh, what I'm saying is, 
Um, landlords are happy, they're unhappy, they're moaning, but the fix is 100% in their control. Whatever you believe the system should be or how things should be set up, there's no argument what the system is. It's written down. If you want to spend time trying to alter the system, go ahead. I think you're wasting your time. Um, I think it's much better to read it, understand it carefully, um, work it into a system that deals with it and, and, and processes it automatically without too much of your input, without your hassle. Just deal with it, stop moaning about it. Um, there's simply no excuse for getting paperwork wrong. You know, give, give you an example. All of our houses have got the license they need. Um, all of our inventories are photographic. When it comes to doing a checkout inventory, it's photographic. And when we sent the thing off to, excuse me, the DPS to claim our deposit back, we always get the money we, uh, we claim back. The tenant never wins the money that they're not due. It's cut and dried. It's not stacked against the landlord, not in the tenant's favour. It's down to the paperwork and getting it right. That's just one example. There are, um, yeah, let's not over exaggerate, probably 20 or so points in an in a, in a average tenancy where having perfect paperwork really does pay those kind of dividends. Um, I was over to the team, you know, when, when this is sounding too hard, because um, it does, you look at it, it's like, crack, that's a lot. We sent a man to the moon, you know, this isn't hard. This is easy. Um, that's the third line of defence, perfect paperwork. Uh, if you're the kind of engaged landlord who provides a decent safe home, that's the first line of defence. Um, then we ref reference and a choosing reference a, a great renter, that's the second line of defence. And then the third line of defence, wrap it all up, perfect paperwork, which again, we need to maintain and um, needs, needs looking after throughout the life of the tenancy. But they are your three lines of defence. Um, now, there is no more defence because you're going to move the tenant in. You're going to give them the key and after the tenant moves in, your defence is gone. You've got three more management focuses, which broadly speaking run along similar lines actually. Um, I'll let you know what they are in the next three videos. Um, but you'll need to concentrate on the, on the other three management focuses once the tenants move in. So, I hope that was useful. Um, if you've got problems with your own tenants, give us a call. Um, if you manage your own properties and you're thinking, yeah, that, a lot of that rings true, um, call up, go, go on, the, um, on, on, the, on the description in the video, click on the Dis uh, Discovery Day link, come on the call and uh, get your questions answered. We'll put a plan together to fix your property portfolio. We charge a fee for what we're doing. You're going to have to get used to that. Um, it's, a, it's a management fee. Uh, we're not expensive, we're not cheap, we're somewhere in the middle. But one thing I know for a fact, and I know it because I used to be the landlord that self-manages or use a crappy agent or whatever, um, having a professional letting agency involved, they'll pay their own fees. They will slightly higher rents, lower voids, collect more of the money that's due. And when it all drops down to the bottom line, I tested it. I've got my accounts from the years when I'm self-managed and the accounts when I actually got everything organized, I made about 10% more, including paying the fees. And yes, I pay my own fees. I have to pay the wages for the guys to do it. So um, if you want us to show you how we can turn an underperforming, troublesome portfolio into something that's you know, causing you zero hassle and makes you as much money as possible, book on that discovery call. If you just want to hear about what we do, how we do it and go off and do it yourself, equally welcome, book on the discovery call or two. Um, they're free, they're no obligation and uh, we, we like having everybody along. So it's always good fun to do it. Look out for the next video in the series and uh, that's it for today. Bye for now.